Hi, I'm Liz Parker, Senior Editor, Candy Industry Magazine. Today we're here with Joel Melton, the Director of Marketing for Clear Inc., maker of Spry Gum. Thanks for being here today with us. Great. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for the invite. So what are some consumer trends or behaviors in the gum category right now? Well, I think the interesting thing is gum and mints are actually seeing a resurgence uh, in the market, and that's uh, the space we're in. Uh, we have our Spry Gum and Mints. Um, but gum specifically has seen a resurgence. And I think today's uh, consumers are looking for something more than just a burst of flavor. Uh, flavor is great, and don't get me wrong, but I think they're looking for something in addition to that burst of flavor. And so I see it as, uh, you know, some several points of these emerging trends. For example, uh, flavors uh, in the flavor category, I think uh, consumers want bold flavors. You know, traditionally, there's been mint flavors and fruit flavors that are uh, widely accepted and everyone uh, likes those, but um, looking into bold flavors and uh, maybe, you know, some uh, fusion of flavors and, and that is uh, starting to see some trending and gaining popularity. Uh, I think another component of the trends is the ingredients. Uh, there's an, a greater resurgence and a desire for uh, natural and clean ingredients. Everyone wants uh, clean uh, gum and mints so that they're not putting additional uh, chemicals or other things into their body while they're chewing gum and enjoying that. Um, and most people are really conscious uh, about uh, what they consume. And they're opting for those without artificial sweeteners, colors, or preservatives. Uh, so sugar-free gums are a big key. Um, and that's the space uh, we're in with Spry, of course, but especially those sweetened with uh, natural alter alternatives like uh, xylitol. Everything that we make has xylitol in it. And uh, that seems to be uh, a real key that uh, is highly sought after right now. Um, with that ingredient, I think then that, that leads right into uh, the functional benefits. Um, functional benefits are, are key, uh, kind of getting more out of uh, your gum. So it can, you can enjoy it and freshen your breath, but uh, consumers are increasingly interested in gums that offer that additional benefit uh, in our case, such as dental health. Um, you know, I think it, uh, a lot of times people will chew gum for other reasons, whether it's stress relief or just the pure enjoyment or blowing bubbles or just uh, be able to enhance focus. Sometimes it gives that uh, ability to people. But xylitol is not only a great sweetener in gum, it actually has a functional oral hygiene benefit. And that's one of the keys that we've uh, used it in our gum as well. Uh, some formulations use a combination of sugar-free sweeteners like xylitol, but also including isomalts, uh, mal mal maltitol and mannitol and sorbitol, other sweeteners that are in there. Unlike sugar, um, the xylitol has a unique property that it benefits the uh, your dental hygiene. Um, but some of those other sweeteners do a similar thing to, uh, to what sugar does in terms of your dental hygiene. So truly it's sugar-free, but it's also uh, kind of reacting to the bacteria that's cavity causing. And that's why we prefer to use xylitol in all we make because of those dental benefits and the great flavor it gets. I think probably lastly, one of the categories and the trends I would consider is the buying and, uh, the, you know, the kind of the consumption of the gum. Um, there's a, notable, a real noticeable shift towards the functional consumption, but gum, because gum is no longer just for fresh breath, but uh, I think larger quantities. Um, so really it's, uh, you know, as we get that functionality, so a tool for oral health to focus and a quick pick me up, pick me up getting that larger quantity. So it's there and available um, for that. So we see larger quantities. In fact, we just launched a, a new quantity of a 55 count gum bag. Um, and that configuration um, is really convenient and easy to carry, but that's because we see that trend moving towards that larger quantity. And we actually even supply a, a count of 550 in a, a big jar that seems to be really uh, gaining popularity. I've been seeing that a lot lately as well. Like people just want something like usually someone would throw something maybe in their purse or their pocket. Um, but people are trending towards like larger that they can, that they can still throw in a purse or pocket, but yeah. Yeah. Bit. I think that's the case. So we get the big one so they can actually, we've, we've heard from consumers that they'll take the big one and resupply their smaller packaging. Uh, themselves, so they have it there available and not having to, to pick it up all, all the time. There are still others who like to get it, at the, at, you know, every time they go to the grocery store or to the, the food market, but we're seeing that trend as well. So that's, yeah, that's definitely the, the case. Yeah. 
that makes sense to me. They don't have to refill. Um, they don't have to be constantly buying it. They can just have the one, the one yeah. bag. Um, and you kind of talked about like buying consumption occasions. Have you seen a difference with like um, COVID times and now where we are now, like post COVID essentially? Um, Cause I know the gum category kind of suffered a bit during COVID, right? Absolutely. I think uh, especially because a lot of gum fits into the impulse buy and so uh, because we weren't in stores, because we weren't doing that and ordering, but I do see that uh, it's, it, you know, obviously we're far enough out of it now that I see there's some normalization of what that had. And what I mean is, you know, we're, we're obviously back in stores now and doing that, but we see, we see kind of a combination here of uh, online purchases, uh, especially those that are using, uh, you know, kind of food service, uh, other things that will order their groceries and get them for them. So we see a, a little bit of a, a uh, uptick in that as well. We're starting to see it really normalize as people get back in, but buying habits definitely changed during COVID. And uh, that was uh, a strain on everyone and every product, um, but making that available so that they can get it online and have it delivered, or if they prefer now, get into a store and get it. That makes sense. And then you've talked about this a little already, but how does Spry work to keep up with current consumer interests, like maybe taste trends, things like that? Yeah, I think that's really the key. I mean, taste is is so funny. Um, I, I, I mean, in terms of how it's viewed, because it seems like there is new, new flavors coming out, but there's always the standard mint. We see that uh, ourselves, and I bet across the board, um, the mint flavors really... Uh, kind of always our preference because in in the mind of consumers, uh, one of the top things is to get that fresh breath. And the only way they feel that is, is by doing mint because it mimics whether they brush their teeth or have a mint in their mouth. But nevertheless, we focus on, you know, innovation and, and maintaining the strong uh, connection with our customer base. That's kind of how we can develop that and watch and see. And we test, you know, if we do testing, when we do come out with flavors, um, social media has really been a great tool for us to provide uh, that connection with our consumers. And it's a great opportunity just to stay connected. We spend time at trade shows, um, not just industry trade shows in the gum, uh, candy and sweets, but we also do a lot of consumer trade shows. We do a lot in the athletic space because of the functionality of our gum. It really provides that benefit to athletes. So that helps us to kind of keep in line with the consumer trends. And, uh, you know, we stay in touch uh, with our sales team is out uh, daily with the, uh, the retailers. And so we, we like to pull that customer, feed, that customer feedback about the consumers from those retailers and kind of see what's going on, emerging flavors and emerging trends there that helps us to kind of stay focused. And, uh, you know, I think really the key here is Spry, our gum Spry is really uh, emphasizes on the health benefits uh, with the xylitol. But also the key here is, you know, that some of the that consumer interest are in the ingredients or the lack thereof. So non-GMO ingredients that we have in our spray, but also xylitol because of its dental benefits. And we, we really try to focus and prioritize uh, that transparency of the ingredients. So there's nothing hidden in ours and nothing that's hard to understand. But nevertheless, I think that's the trends. Everyone kind of really, they just want to know what's in their gum. Okay. That makes sense. And then we've kind of just touched on this, but my next question was any notable in innovations in gum that you're seeing. So we talked about like the packaging sizes, ingredients, things like that. Yeah. So I think the, the key there is the functional gum. Um, I think new gums are being infused with various supplements. You know, there's some vitamins, there's uh, other ingredients like ours with xylitol that we sweeten with and also the functionality of it. Um, but I think that's really one of the things that uh, we see uh, in a, and innovation is really that functionality uh, in the gum. And, and probably, I don't know if it's second in order, but it's certainly key. And we try to, to make it a key point of ours is, uh, you know, there's their eco-friendly packaging out there. And uh, we've been looking into it carefully because uh, we want to contribute to everything we can to uh, give back. And, uh, you know, I think uh, there's still some gap there, but we're, we're constantly searching and trying to find the options and solutions and I think that's one of the innovations here. Um, one of the, the downfalls of, you know, maybe a lot of it is that it just doesn't always maintain the freshness because of the, the things that are needed and, and cost effective. You know, those to try to limit passing those costs on to the consumer, um, you know, we're constantly searching for those options. But 
those are probably two innovations that I see in addition, you know, what's out there, but uh, functional gums and uh, constantly trying to uh, get into the eco-friendly packaging. Okay. And does Spry have any recent gum launches to share or anything that's upcoming this year? Recently, we just launched a new configuration, um, and that was at the beginning of the year. January 1, we kicked that off and got that out to our retailers. So by you know mid to end Q1, most of our retailers were, uh, were actually uh, carrying the 55-count spry. And the reason why that was so key for us was, as we talked earlier, just the, the size of it and the ability. And we actually you know, had a campaign with it with Dare to Share because of the functionality of the gum. We really key and think that that's uh, you know helpful to share that uh, the benefit, the functionality, but also just to enjoy some gum with others. The, we are currently exploring other trends, uh, as I mentioned just briefly, in packaging and flavoring. Um, we don't have any specific things we can share yet, but I just say stay tuned because we've got a lot of innovation uh, coming. Okay. I'll keep an eye out. And then my last question, what is your favorite Spry product to enjoy? Well, uh, my favorite product, we we had uh, previously, uh, we had a product that we uh, that was our gems. They were kind of a, a softer, uh, larger mint. Um, and those are currently discontinued, but I, I think those might be, uh, you know, something that we uh, could very well see come back. And they're just, it's a great option. It provides the the dental benefits, but it's just a really nice mint. I loved it. And it was here right when I got here and started, but uh, sense of discontinued for some other reasons. But also, uh, you know, maybe this isn't my favorite flavor now because we don't have these either, but we had licorice and wintergreen flavors. Those were just some great flavors, but just as market trends switch and trade. But I can tell you, don't worry, because we haven't lost any of the recipes for any of those. And uh, they're still on the consideration. But of our available current flavors, I am a big fan of our cinnamon flavor, both in the gum and the mints. It's uh, it's really refreshing to me. And I think the flavor, our cinnamon flavor really lasts the longest, but it's the truth is it really is packed with those health dental benefits, um, which I think is great. Um, but it's my go-to, uh, the, the cinnamon flavor for that quick refresh uh, when I'm on a busy day and I'm just trying to get through it and make sure that I have good dental health, but also fresh breath. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and that's all the time we have for today, but thanks again for being here with us. Oh, I sure appreciate the time. Uh, looking forward to catching up with you other times too, but thanks for your time today. Mm -hmm.